We're getting closer to the end or at least to the part where we can actually buy our products or go to the checkout process. Right now, the state of our application, of course, is that we have our projects here, products, and we can click on them, add them to our cart, and have a look at our cart. But this checkout button doesn't work. And in this video, I want to work on that. I want to make this checkout button working, and I want to go to a checkout page. Of course, next steps then are to actually implement the checkout. But let's do it step by step and focus on creating the required views and routes first. For this, as a first step, I will head over to my shopping cart plate.php file, so the view which renders the shopping cart, and this is the button which actually should, well, navigate me to the shopping cart or to the checkout, excuse me, should navigate me to the checkout. Now I'll just change this to be an anchor tag, so simply by replacing button with A, also replace it in the closing tag here, of course. I'll keep the button classes to keep the look of it. And why did I change this? Well, simply because I want to make this a link pointing to a route, which I will create next. But I will enter it right now here. So entering the template expression here with double curly braces, I'll use route to create a link to the checkout route. Now, as I just said, this route doesn't exist yet, so let's create it. In the routes.php file, here I want to set up this route, and I'll do it right here below the shopping cart related routes. So this will be a get route, and it should give me my checkout page. So I'll well, give it a URL of slash checkout, and then of course my array to configure this route. And here I want to use my product controller, but I want to use the get checkout action, which I also haven't created yet, and I will do so in a second. I'll give this route a name, and of course the name should be checkout, because that's the name I just used in the anchor tag, right? So with that, I created my get route. The next step, of course, is to create this get checkout action in the product controller. So I'll head over there to the product controller and at the bottom of course positioning doesn't really matter I just want to keep my cart related routes up here and then I'll go to my checkout related routes down here or actions um, I will create a public function which I will call get checkout and this of course will be the checkout action triggered by this link and in here what I want to do is I first want to check if I do have a cart so I'll just copy the code from my get cart action here. And if I don't have a cart, I'm fine with redirecting the user to the, well, empty shopping cart page, which basically will tell him, hey, you don't have items on the cart, please uh, add some. So basically, it's kind of a redirect since I'm clicking on the checkout link on this page. So I could also use redirect back, I guess. But yeah, I will keep it like this just in case that something fishy is going on and the user tried to enter the checkout page by entering slash checkout in the URL. Well, then I will make sure he's not getting to the checkout page if he doesn't have a card. So if we do have a card, I will first fetch this via the session facade and then from the, well, card. So get cart. This is the cart stored in the session. And that are all things we did in the last videos, right? So like uh, up here where I get the cart too. I don't need to check if we have the cart like I did here, because I did this here in the first step. Keep that in mind. So with that, I'm fetching the old cart. And I will create a new cart that's the same, well, scheme or the same, well, approach I used before in the last lectures. And I will create this new card based on the old card, of course. And then just to keep that, well, approach, I could, of course, also just access the total on this old card. So then I will use my card and access total price, which, of course, is the price the user should pay. And then I will return a view. And I want to return a view I still have to create. I didn't do that yet. I will place it in the shop folder and I will name it checkout.blade.php. So here I'm accessing shop.checkout, oops, dot checkout, which will lead to this view I've yet to create. I also want to pass the total price to that view. So total, total, like this. 
So with that, I make sure that I do have that price on the view. So with that, the route is set up, but of course the view doesn't exist yet. So in the shop folder here, I will create this new file, the checkout.blade.php file, which will be, well, my checkout view. Here in this view, I'll first go to my shopping cart view just to grab the, well, the, the first view, view lines here. So with the extending the layout and so on. And then I'll close my section here too. And with that, I'm ready to write the markup for my checkout page. Now, which markup do I want here? I'll go back to the shopping cart and I will grab the divs here with the bootstrap, well, formatting with the bootstrap columns, uh, because I want to keep that, well, that style I also reuse throughout the rest of my application. Though I think I can make it a little bit less wide on bigger screens. So I will increase the offset by one to get it a little bit more in the middle. And therefore I will decrease the width to have it a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter, not, not as broad in the middle of my screen. But that's pure stylistic things and you might change this of course. Uh, then just a little header where I say check out. And then I want to have another header where I inform the user what his current total is. So your total is, remember everything is in dollars, so I will hard code the dollar sign here, then enter my template expression and here I want to print out total, which I do have because this here, this total, refers to the variable I'm passing here in the product controller down here. So I will have access to this total price. With that, the user knows how much he's supposed to pay. And next it's time to create the, well, the form to fetch the user information. So here I want to also trigger a post route and I'll name checkout. Of course, I also have to create this route later on and I will use the method post like that. And now here's an important thing. How will I actually handle the checkout? Well, I need some information like credit card number because I will enter, I will provide a credit card based checkout here. So I need that, I need the name, I need the security code on the credit card. And how would I actually do this? Will I create some code to connect to American Express or MasterCard? Not really. I will use Stripe, which is a third party, well, provider or service you can use, which basically already has all the connections to the credit card companies and offers you a very simple API you may implement in your project to then easily create charges and basically charge customers based on the payment data they provide. It will also verify the data and encrypt it, protect it. So a lot of stuff you don't have to worry about and you really shouldn't worry about because that is really complicated and not something easily solved with a few, kind of few uh, lines of code. Especially since you also would need to kind of negotiate your deals with the credit card companies and so on. So that is why such a third party service is really worth a lot and I will use Stripe, which is the service. So therefore the question is, which information does Stripe need? So which information do I need to gather in this form here? Well, let's have a look. I will head over to the browser and Google for Stripe, or uh, not strip, I'm not looking for any hot girls. So stripe.com is the page of this service. And right here, you can, well, basically read what the service is all about. It's certainly interesting. And you can also go to the documentation. And then as you can see, they got quite a well, long documentation, which also has this nice getting started guide, which leads you through all the core, well, uh, steps in the process to charge a customer. And basically here, you can already see which data we need. We need the credit card number, expiration month and year, and the security code, the CBC code here. If we fetch these four information pieces, we can basically send them to Stripe, Stripe verifies them, and then we can charge the customer. So we need to collect those four pieces of information. So that is what I will implement in my form here. I will therefore 
throw in some code. And now here's a part, some of you like it, some of you don't. I think I will always make it wrong. I will just copy in some prepared code here. Now, the reason why I copied this code into here is it's really just some bootstrap form control HTML markup. Nothing special about that. I will, of course, lead you through that. I will fetch a bit more information than the one required by Stripe because later on in this application we might want to store, for example, the user address if we want to ship whatever he ordered, right? So therefore the first input here is the name of the user and this is required with this HTML5 required attribute here. Then I'm fetching the address, also required. And then I want to get the card holder name, which of course might be equal to the name up here, but I want to enable the user to have a different shipping name or shipping address and card holder name. Therefore, I'm fetching this on a separate input. And one important thing to notice here is that all these inputs don't have a name attribute, so I'm not assigning names. The reason for this, as you will see, is that I'm not submitting this form to Laravel. So even though I'm setting up a post route here in my form tag, I will actually capture this post request whenever I click on the button with JavaScript. And you will see all of that, no worries. And then not send it to the server, but instead read this form here. And I can access all the fields with the IDs I am setting. Notice that I do have IDs. And then I will collect this information and I will send this information to Stripe. And that's very important to understand that I will basically not send this to Laravel directly, but instead I will capture it with JavaScript and send it to Stripe first. Thereafter, I will let my Laravel application handle the response Stripe gives me, but I need to reach out to Stripe, this service first, because it's the service validating all the data and basically being responsible for, well, me being able to charge customers. That's why I have these two steps. And you may read more about that in the documentation, the Stripe documentation, where you will also find examples for Node.js or PHP or whatever code and how to implement it. So back to this form. This is the form I have without names, but with IDs, which I will need in my JavaScript code. Then I'm fetching the credit card number, the expiration month and the expiration year and this CVC field here. So the security code I also need to fetch. And all the layout here with the columns is just set up so that this doesn't look too ugly, ugly hopefully. Of course, since we're here in a Laravel form, I will also need to enter my CSRF field here because that is still needed. CSRF protection is still in place. Even though we're using Stripe as a first step, we need to validate the session of the user nonetheless. And then I will add a button of type submit, which I will give a class of button and then button success. And I will just say buy now here. So with that, I'm almost done. Now we'll go up. I will also give my form an ID here. So I'll just name it, let's say, checkout form like that. And I will add some other things in, well, uh, when we progress with this whole Stripe process. For now, that's what the view will look like. And we're returning this view since we're getting this get act checkout action here in the route and in the product controller. Remember, we're returning this view. Now, since I will use the post checkout route in my view here too, in the form. I also need to set this up in order to avoid any errors. So I will create a new route, a post route, also slash checkout. I can do this because the other route is a get route, keep that in mind. So I can easily use a route with the same segment here, which is or uses another HTTP verb. I will also use the product controller here. So product controller, and then let's say post checkout. And then I will give this a name of checkout, which also is the same name as the get route has. But again, we're using different HTTP verbs here. So with that, all the routes here are set up. Let's see if that is enough to get it working. I will basically reload my shopping cart page. If I now click on checkout, 
I'm taken to the checkout page. And as you can see, I could enter my details here. If I click buy now though, or well, let me quickly fill something out here, max, and then I will grab this example, dummy credit card number here on the, um, on the Stripe page. And then let's enter any arbitrary month here and year and code. Click on buy now. Well, and I, of course I get an error because the post checkout action, which I'm using here in my routes file doesn't exist yet. But besides that, well, the checkout format at least does work. And that's a huge first step on which we can build on to implement the actual checkout process with Stripe. Now, a good practice for you might be to try this on your own before, well, watching the solution in the next video. On the documentation page here on Stripe, you should get all you need and you can also click on examples down here to have a look at some examples, for example, a payment form built with PHP and so on. And you can also generally dive through all these links here to learn how to in implement Stripe. It's not that difficult The getting start started guide here is certainly also a great resource. And well, if you feel stuck or are not sure how it works, well then definitely, or in all other cases too, come back in the next like video and we'll do this together.